Um, we will, the, the topic will still continue a little bit with uh, Newton's first law of motion. Uh, maybe go a little bit more in depth on that, uh, may explain it a little bit more, and then just start to introduce some of uh, Newton's second law um, that we will spend actually quite some more time on because there's a lot that is involved with it. So um, we have to make sure that we have a couple understandings about some things and that uh, inertia it depends upon an object's mass and that an object's mass is not the weight of the object. Um, mass is a uh, kind of is a way of measuring the inertia um, that an object has. Um, and so we have to make sure that we understand that the difference between mass and weight. Um, usually by this point in time in uh, most uh, students' uh, academic careers, weight and uh, mass are uh, understood as that they are not the same. Um, weight is uh, definitely something that we will be calculating a lot. And in some cases, um, we will try to, if the mass is not important, which might seem odd that an object's mass is not um, important for the solving of a problem um, because there are some things that happen in physics that will happen regardless of the object's mass. And uh, some of those types of things um, we will actually uh, mathematically can't figure out a way uh, to cancel out mass and uh, and show that it actually mathematically doesn't even matter. And so there will be some things that do require us to look at mass and um, and so but we do have to worry about some of those things. Um, and the amount of ma uh, weight that an object has is always again based on the gravitational, uh, acceleration or the gravity uh, acceleration due to gravity um, that's going to be a big one as well um, if we haven't figured out how what the uh, measurement is um, that's what we will use for uh, so the uh, we use always that the uh, gravity on the moon is much less um, it would even be much less on uh, say Mars but it would be much greater uh, on a larger celestial object such as um, the uh, Jupiter in that um, so you have that so the mass would stay the same although your weight would be uh, greatly different and even on the earth there is just small variations in um, gravity it's and when I say small they are small um, and that's why sometimes uh, you will see just 9.8 used as uh, a uh, gravity uh, because that's probably the more even one. Uh, but for a lot of the calculations that we do in this class, we use 9.81. That's because the reference materials that we had used prior to that, uh, to this year's uh, stuff, always used 9.81. And so we just became accustomed to using it. Um, and so that's why we kind of just use the 9.81 for us. Um, if the net force on an object is zero, um, meaning that uh, there is an equilibrium that all the forces acting both on and uh, in one direction and the other are uh, in equilibrium, meaning they're equal and opposite. And in some ways, the object can be moving, but it can also be at rest. Um, and so we, this is an important part of it. And this, and Newton's first law is we, why do we talk about it first? Well, it's important because we need to be able to identify uh, an object at, it is moving. Okay, it's moving. Is it moving constantly at a, at a constant velocity? If it's moving at a constant velocity, that means that there is no acceleration. If there is no acceleration, then the uh, object doesn't have a force acting on it. If it is speeding up, there is a force acting on it. 
and and we've seen this and it is can be uh, as simple as just an object sliding down a ramp well because if I have the object just there there's no for there there's forces acting on it right we know there's a force acting on it because the ping pong ball if I take this away the ping pong ball drops right so there's a force acting on it what is the force that's acting on it when it's just sitting there what's the one that we know for sure is Feel free to unmute yourself and answer. Gravity. Gravity. Yes, gravity. We know why. Because if I take this away, the ball drops, right? But now we also have to think of, okay, gravity's acting down, but it's not falling down, right? It's not moving. So there must be another force pushing in the other direction. What is that? Well, that's this foam tube here. That's the other uh, force. And you're like, but that's just a foam tube. It can't in enact a force. No, it can. It's pushing on the ping pong ball in the opposite direction of gravity. Without this here, the ping pong ball falls. Right? And it's the same thing if you're walking on a tightrope. What's keeping you from falling? The tightrope. It might be small, but still is there. Okay? When it's at an angle, the force of the tube, or the styrofoam here, is much less. And therefore, gravity is able to take hold and move it down the ramp, so to speak. Well, that means there's gravity. Right? Not only that, there's going to be gravity in two directions. So the gravity here, we see, they're like, okay, well, gravity's acting here. Well, it's moving this way. So actually, now we have to split up the gravity that we want to talk about. That's the up and down gravity here. That, excuse a pencil, you know, the gravity that we would want to talk about this way can't be looked at that way anymore. We now have to look at gravity going this way because that's the direction in which it goes down the ramp and gravity going the other to finish off that vector, so to speak. And so this is why, you know, understanding of vectors and triangles is so important because that's really what happens here is we have this, but the force pushing of the ramp isn't actually pushing down anymore it's actually pushing perpendicular to the well the force the the force of gravity in the y direction is perpendicular to the object in which it's on so it's pointing out this way and then gravity is pointing this way and if you put add those your weights and gravity in the x direction gravity in the y direction well it's actually technically this way um we will see that it adds up to a nice triangle, a right triangle most of the time. And so those are things that we're going to kind of look at as how this works in together. So if we don't see it, we can't say it. And that's why drawing what we see out is so important. And then we have covered uh, this, and this is, again, why drawing out things is so important, is it gives us a reference. It gives us a understanding of how are we looking at the object. There are going to be times that there might be m more than one drawing. And again, your drawings don't have to be very elaborate. Most of my uh, drawings for physics are circles and squares. And because of that, it just makes, I think, easier. It kind of gets uh, some of the, uh, the physics sometimes, I think, can be lost in trying to add in too much detail that doesn't mean anything to what we're looking at. 
Um, but then sometimes it can be just kind of an added thing to that. But it is, we have to be very careful at making sure that our frame of reference is looked at well. And so drawing out what we are think or seeing or what we think it are seeing is kind of important part of this whole process. So if an object is accelerating, it might require multiple frames, the kind of the before, during, after, to kind of see where forces are involved on the object. Because again, it's a, a lot of the, the forces that we're talking about are pretty much just going to be a push or a pull uh, for the objects. So that frame of reference still going to be extremely important. And it's that no, when they say that the net force on the object is zero, its velocity is constant. And that gives us that finishing off part of Newton's first law is that if there is no net force, it's not moving. And if there is a net force, meaning not zero, it's not moving. So if we can look at it um, in just a very simple form that an object sitting on a table, you know, we don't need to look at the legs and we don't need to look at the floor or anything like that. The object isn't moving. And therefore, the net force is zero. So an object's at rest and will stay there until another force comes in and acts on it. I'm trying to draw something there. You know, let's go... If a force acts on it, and then the object moves, and the object is moving at this, at, as long as that force is uh, interacting with the object, we draw that force there. And therefore, now the object is moving and will continue to move until we take that force away. Now, once that force is gone, there still might be movement, okay? Because we understand that friction's there until friction overcomes that, but we would still have friction because friction technically then is gonna be moving in the opposite direction. And over here, we can have friction there. It just might not be as big of an arrow as the, the pushing of it. So that's kind of what we look at is how are that happening. Now, we didn't talk about the force of you know gravity down on the object and what would out, end up being a opposite to that, and that would be the force of the table on the book they equal zero, so there is no up and down motion. We're only worrying about a left and right motion in this example. We take that this away, and an object falls. Well, there's going to be a certain amount of gravity. We also now know it's not good that there's not an object uh, holding it in place. There's an, uh, going to be air resistance. There's going to be some, it's still going to fall, right? Now all of a sudden you take that away. You can now then see where, why sometimes objects don't fall uh, at the same rate as they should because there's air resistance. And that's gonna get, that would get really tricky because that then you have to worry about the shapes of the objects. And that's why, again, we try not to engineer things up too much. And air resistance, a lot of times, is going to be taken out of the uh, equations um, because it's there's too many variables to, to look at in some cases. 
we bring it up it's really about uh, all surface area and but ultimately we just try to eliminate it from our equations as best that we can and a lot of times the problems just tell us eh, forget about it so there is no left and right force on this object here so therefore we don't we, a lot of times we just don't worry about it because if there is any if you know ooh, there's a wind coming we don't look at it as that part of it is we're just going to look at it as just the up and down is that's what's acting on it now newton's second law deals with the effects of the forces on the objects so the newton's three laws of motion especially newton's first and second law definitely have a very large connection to the, each other you kind of almost can't deal with one without the other in that we start looking at what is going on with these forces and the effects of forces on that object and if what is you know gravities are fo falling allowing that object to fall but and then some cases it's not always falling because there's something holding it up and that's that effect of forces and then we have to think about it and this is why you know physics um isn't isn't just teaching you sometimes about the force but in some cases is also teaching you to kind of see the matrix so to speak and you kind of look at things differently and how objects as they are moving you're like okay what why is that moving that way in in kind of in, being inquisitive like okay the object's moving what's making it move that way and ultimately we kind of come down to all forces kind of work into this chart so to speak so you have your contact forces which are pushes or pulls but then you also have gravitational electromagnetic and nuclear Most of what we deal with in this class are going to be contact forces. Meaning we will look at a lot of pushing forces, some pulling forces, some gravitational forces, weight. And I think there are a couple problems where we are dealing with some magnetic forces, but... Uh, electromagnetic is almost a second semester college uh, uh, class for many uh, physics classes. Um, and uh, the goal of this class is not to uh, try and mimic exactly a full year of uh, college physics. Um, it's kind of like try to really get us a good understanding of the Newtonian physics um, in preparation for some of you that have to go on and actually do take uh college uh physics whether that be the calculus based or the non-calc based which would be the algebra based uh uh physics um and even some medical they're starting to even have another subdivision and that is more uh body movement kinesiology uh talking about the physics of just your uh body and how it's moving um and i think a lot of that is important to understand your newtonian physics um and that's why we just kind of focus on that instead of trying to give you very brief overviews.